Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dagwood33, and welcome back to Hearts Divine Forward, the New Order, Last Days of Europe, as the Greater German Reich. Spears! Greater German Reich, at that. In the last video, we started working on trying to get Norway back to our side, if we can find the focus tree right there. There we are. Um, they are technically not necessarily aligned with us, but we can work with that. In fact, we are about to work with that. We're going to strengthen our prestige. To say that our reputation on Norway is not stellar would be an understatement. No matter how cooperative the government is to our advances, the average Norwegian would rather die, and most likely will, than allow Germania to meddle in their affairs again, occupiers or otherwise. This situation is precarious enough to endanger the current Norwegian administration itself, and our interests lying within by proxy. Both of our hearts and minds offensive in and in coordination with the government's own propaganda programs, we must do everything we can to remedy this post-haste. So this will give us some better reputation. They'll join the Zolveren and the Unity Pact as well, which is very interesting. Yeah, the Norwegians actually really love us. It's really funny. The Battle of Barcelona. Barcelona. They're doing Nordic cooperation. The U.S. has agreed to help them. But, uh... No, I don't think you guys need the help. Yeah, there you go. The Zilvarin. Some They're getting some good dosh sent our way. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Huh. Well, let's take a look at um, South Africa. And it's interesting... Yeah, you know, all the naval invasions and such. Um, like I said, I don't want to waste too much resources there, because even if we do end up winning, yeah, we don't end up... They don't last very long. Um, any of my enemy will give us some extra stab. But um, what I'm curious about... And maybe this is just me. Hold on, let me check real quick. We'll see what happens here with Italy. Do they overshoot it? Because if they do, we got Hungary. Yeah, they... Oh, they overshot. Did I do... I think I might have actually... No, I, I don't think I touched that one, actually. Um... What I'm tempted to do... Because I want to get working on Poland. We need 75 regime stability, which I realize. And that's not... That's a bit of a push to do right now. I'm not going to lie. But... We need political power. Because we're losing stab right now. Um, okay, now we guess. I'm going to do this, just test it out real quick, and then just cross my fingers and hope this doesn't come to bite me in the ass. So we're going to go for Reich Minister's plan. And we're just doing this, this hopefully, this one time. Helmut Schmidt, the Reich, Minister, the Reich Minister of Foreign Affairs, has proposed a starkly different plan to that of his contemporaries in the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht. Indeed, rather than suggest that the Gro Greater German Reich conduct a full-scale occupation of Poland, Schmidt has asserted that only through diplomacy and the per per perusement of compromise can a deal be effectively forged. Hmm. It seems that the Reich Minister's plan has been received with characteristically positive with characteristic positivity by Fear Spear. Good, sehr gut. There we go. And after this, I promise I will not do anything like that again. There we go. Okay. Focus. Dot. No checks. So, Herr Schmidt, I've heard about your plan. 
Spear looked up from his desk, his eyes meeting his foreign ministers. I'd like you to explain it to me more, because frankly, I don't understand why we need to go this m to this much effort over a place like Portland. Schmier straightened his... Uh, Sch Schmier. S Schmidt straightened his tie. It's less about Poland itself, and more about the international effects, my fear. Spear leaned back in his chair. Elaborate. Well, we could enforce our, enforce our will through force of arms on the Poles, as we did in the 30s, but the main issue is that internationally, this would threaten our image as a reformist, gentler Reich. The, the issue of the plan, Schmidt, is that it is going to force us into promises we might not want to keep. Understand my plan is not perfect, but it is the only way to keep our image safe. Besides, negotiation means no bloodshed, and neither of us want that, do we? Schmidt smiled. No, of course not. I give you permission to go ahead. Don't screw this up for me, will you? Speer uh, shuffled in his chair. Schmidt nodded before leaving the room, the hopes of a new Reich, the Breck's new standing resting squarely on his shoulders. So, you know, no pressure. I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope that my regime stability doesn't go too high. Otherwise, I might need to get some more PP going. The cost to hold a speech is going up really high. A telegram to Warsaw. To begin with, Reich Minister Schmidt has prepared that has decreed that the Reichsamt das Ausfertigen prepare a telegram that shall be sent to the Polish government in Warsaw. Schmidt, seeking to establish diplomatic cordiality between Poland and the Greater German Reich, desires to make clear his intention to pursue an earnest diplomatic relationship relationship with his foreign contemporaries, hoping to spear cordiality and no, ah, encourage negotiation with the recently liberated. Alright. Okay, Poland. This should be easy. Don't fuck... You just gotta say yes. Like, I don't... We, we saw what happened with Slovakia. I don't like what happened there either. I don't want to do that. So there are two reasons I'm doing this with Poland. One... Well, actually, one real main reason. Um, all of this requires me to, uh, like, everything else requires me to deal with Poland first. So we'll get working on Ukraine after Caucasia. After we finish uh, Ukraine. And then probably uh, Russia afterwards. Russia has a neat little focus tree, I remember. We have some tech we can get working on, so let's do, I guess, um... Better motorized. And, uh, whatever this is, why not? It's not too bad. Let's do it. Onwards. Posters are slowly coming down the rank. Radio programs are s subtly returning to their normal rank. Ah, uh, just for propaganda. So, how are we looking? Yeah, the regime is leaning reformist. The outlook is still progressing in our favor, and our stab is going down. That's because the social outlook is conservative, I believe. Uh. You know? It's like the old album, Suffering from Success. We're going to Warsaw. Oh, bitte, Polska. Don't... Please say yes. Come on. This is really your only shot of survival. I hope you know that. Like, I don't want to threaten them, but we, we, we can't not point out that this is the case. That they have to do this to survive. Perhaps we should make the point clearer by surrounding them. Okay, we got it. Ooh. Fuck, more stability loss. God damn it. The news passed through the foreign ministry's hands quickly, fast tracked to two offices Helmut Schmidt and Albert Speers. The message read like a celebration. The Poles had, after much consideration and debate, accepted talks with Helmut Schmidt. Together they wrote, they had, together they wrote, they hoped that Ger Poland and Germany would work together to take Europe into an ascendant future. 
these talks being the groundwork to lay such a foundation. Of course, it was all diplomatic flattery for now. Nobody would dare to be brutally honest this early, but it was enough for Germany and was certainly enough for Schmidt and Speer. In Speer's office, Albert read the letter with a slight sigh of relief as he took a drink. Lorries danced in his mind. What if they forced the Reich's hand? What if Schmidt's promise the stars and the sun? But he sidelined them for, for now. For now, things were moving along smoothly. Sh uh, uh, Speer had to admit, despite his personal dislike of Schmidt, he got things done. In Schmidt's office, Helmut took the news joyously. He had expected them to accept, but it actually happening gave him an opening. With the cooperation of the Poles, he could set things right once and for all, and Europe would be one step closer to light. The hopes of Poland rest uneasy. Okay, so what do we got? Oh, God. Uh, regime collapse imminent. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Okay, okay, okay. Do not panic. Do not panic. Regime collapse imminent. Okay, now panic. Now panic. <sighs> yeah, maybe this wasn't a good idea. God damn it. Um... We're making some progress. Let's do a game of balancing for now. The Reich suffered a devastating, suffered devastatingly from a civil war mere months ago. To launch ourselves into a military endeavor against the U.S., even if only by proxy, too risky. Despite the potential rewards, what von Treskow proposes will only worsen our already precarious situation and risk enraging the common populace who wouldn't understand the renewed waste of human lives. Reich Minister Schmidt offers a much more balanced solution. We can't abandon our colonial possessions without a fight, but we'll limit our support in order to balance our interests with those of the United States. By keeping this war in a stalemate, we can broker an agreement that suits both competitors' wishes. Oh, that's just a bypass. Okay. Now let's send what's left. It's going to take us time to save what we could out of the African territories our fatherland has. So it's up to us to keep ourselves from pulling out of this war too quickly. Whatever time we have left must be used wisely. And that means delivering ne equ uh, needed equipment to the Reich Commissariat, allowing them to survive for as long as we need to, really. It seems about right. Um, okay, they're pushing over this river. Can we do a um, OFN leading ceasefire? Not quite. They need to take their... Probably... Yeah, Lusatka is, has fallen. It, when a uh, Quelamine falls... Okay, we got a little bit of extra PP. But not much. Holy fuck. Um... Um, let's focus on the slaves of the Reich. Actually, a little bit, little bits of stability here, here, and here might be what we need right now. This will be a net. Not this will be a net neutral. If we do that, that'll be a net neutral. If we end up doing that. God damn it. Okay. Regime collapses in it anyway, so I'm just gonna have to PP twenty-five. Okay. We're staying out of imminent Reich collapse. Huh. Go figure, convincing Nazis not to be so Nazi like anymore is pretty tough. Um shit. Okay, enemy my enemy. So the saying goes, at least. Japan is certainly a military and economic juggernaut, but it's also xenophobic, isolationist, and paranoid in the extreme. They will never regard us as equals, as do much due to their so-called pan-Asianism as to our contrived rivalry. We will continue pursuing a thaw in relations, but it is clear that there 
that trying to rebuild our old ties with Japan is a complete waste of time. No matter, the Wehrmacht is all Germany needs to defend herself. We'll be better off with an arrogant, far-flung ally dra without a f arrogant, far-flung ally dragging us down with them. In line with Schmidt's sound reasoning, the U.S. will be our main focus in diplomacy. Perhaps it's for the best, as we have far more in common with them th than with the Japanese. They might be corrupt. Plutocrats, but the Americans are still European at heart, with plenty of honest German heritage. If we can smooth over the ongoing tensions in Africa and start exchanging goods again, perhaps the geopolitical tables can be turned on Japan. It would not be inconvenient. It would not inconvenience us to see their exploitative empire fall and free nations emerge from the ruins. There we go. Fuck, we might. Honestly, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do vast political promises. It's not going to do much in the end, admittedly. But it gives us an okay base. So we can show special projects. Um, we'll do all of these. Poverty, the tradesmanship initiatives, education investments. Okay, enemy my enemy. That was a net nothing, right? Yep, net nothing. So we'll do. We'll show how we are not. In, we are in fact not alone. This is no ordinary day in politics for Speer. It is began with the most unusual meeting. Reinhard Gellin, spymaster extraordinaire and former head of foreign, Ar foreign Armies East, was at the Reich Chancellery even before Speer himself. An urgent matter, he said, as he barged his way into the past the fear to lay out his papers on Hitler's old desk. Though calm and collected as ever, there was no mistake aching his tone. We've got problems. Okay, so what do we got on the, um... Yeah, so we got ten days, and then, um... We more or less have hungry, I think. And there goes the Ost Africa Capital. I think that should be enough to get the uh, ceasefire, right? I'd have to imagine so. Yeah. We just need the pee pee. Oh, Pakistan has become independent. That is interesting. See, it seems to be more or less democratically done. Okay. I imagine that'll get rid of religious tensions a bit. Looks so, like yeah, they got all that figured out. They don't have to argue over uh, Kashmir. Free military factories. Oh, well, they probably will, but they don't have to worry about China in the equ equation, because, you know, uh, China's a little fucked right now. I don't know if you noticed, the National Protection Army. Oh, Long Yun. What a man. That Yang Lu... Long... Yang... What was it? God damn, what's his name? Long Yun, what a man right there. The United States, Spear finally said, opening his eyes and setting his hands down on the desk. You have had this count, Schmidt. We need the economic clout on our side. Schmidt breathed a sigh of relief and nodded. <sighs> Thank you, my Fuhrer. I promise you, this is the right path. They're, um, well, they're normal. Speer chewed his lip, looking a bit skeptical. Hmm, true, but they won't stop trying to subvert our interests. Don't forget that we've always been on hostile terms for decades now, and that history won't go away just because you enjoyed some applause value while over there. I I know my fear, Schmidt replied with a slightly offended edge to his voice, but they also operate in a manner we're more familiar with. In our two societies are more alike than they are different. The Japanese, though, trying to build normal relations with them, even if it's not totally futile, 
might just make them more confident in their own broken system. Can you imagine if we got dragged into another VAR because of them? If you ask me, they should keep them at arm's length, my fear. Spear nodded and scratched his chins. Yes, I understand, but still, the Japanese still match the Americans in their military might. Isn't there some value in a deter deterrent? Deterrent. My fear, forgive me for my frank frankness, but we already have a deterrent. It is called our nuclear arsenal. Conventional armies don't have the clout that they used to. Trust me, Erhard is right. The economic benefit of trade with the U.S. will far outweigh anything the Japanese can offer. And we can't be seen to associate with the Japanese if we take a turn towards aggression again. I've already made my decision, Schmidt. Spear remarked, relaxing a little. Don't threat. Tell your men at the foreign office to get to work and contact Erhard, too. We still have a long way to go before we start, start seeing fuzz on the Autobahn. Two eagles shall fly together. More drill. Which one is that? That's the modern one. Okay. We are not alone. Yeah. Okay, we could use some more pee pee. Let's get a helping hand. Of course, Galen will not be so forthright and helpful without the expectation of due reward. Quite unlike the Nazi Toadies, that Toadies, however, he has made the bold, unexpected, and altogether useful request. The formation of an entirely new agency under his direct authority. There are serious questions about his motives, but Galen has always been the very model of a consummate professional. Motivated by patriotism and a borderline obsessive desire to keep keep the Reich's backroom affairs in order. He's one of our most successful intelligence operatives. Might this be what we need after all? Dub the Reichsnach... Reichsnachricht at... The Reich Intelligence Service, or, or R&D, this proposed agency would consolidate our existing intelligence services under a single umbrella. All the foreign intelligence gathering activities will be the R&D's responsibility alone, and they would also take over all high-level internal security. Low, lower level Gestapo roles will be folded into the Orpo, and the app there will effectively become the R&D's military division. This would be a considerable accumulation of power in Gellin's hands, but this would give us a clean break from the Hitler-era agencies and bring us up to par with our international rivals in the field of espionage. I'm down for that. Oh, Himmler, what are you doing? Reinhard Gellin was not an impressive man to behold. So then faced with prominent ears, he was not the sort of fellow one would expect to hold a tremendously successful record as former head of Foreign Armies East, a military intelligence unit active during the war against the Soviets, nor could he be counted as a particularly dedicated ideologue. What he was, however, was loyal, ruthless, and utterly dedicated to his nation, having continued his own intelligent operations against the Bolsheviks even after their defeat. In Speer's estimation, he was not only brilliant, but also a true German patriot, which is why he had been invited to the lofty halls of power to discuss a certain proposal of his. Speer relaxed a little, sensing nothing but respectful de deference from the immediately dressed man with a quaint Fowler hat. Sir Gun, he said, steepling his fingers, I understand that on top of all of this information you've brought me, you have an idea for how to deal with the matter of internal security. Please speak your mind. Galen hesitated for a moment before visibly relaxing and leaning into the desk. Uh, my fear, it is no secret in intelligence circles that they are seeking to reign in the Gestapo and Abwehr, if I may be so bold. They are indeed in poor shape. They could neither prevent the civil war, nor reign in the dissident factions within the Reich. Spear's face remained inscrutable. Go on. After the war, the Americans changed tack. Their wartime organization, the OSS, became the foundation of the CIA. They learned from their mistakes, adjusted accordingly, and now they're drastically outpacing us in the field of intelligence. The same goes for the Japanese, as well as for every second vape power in the world. We need something else, a new agency for the modern era. Spear pondered this for a moment. Interesting idea. Do you have anything more concrete for me? Gillen nodded. He held his briefcase up on, on the desk and clicked it open, producing an overstuffed manila, manila envelope with rice that R&D scrawled on it. I do indeed, my fear. Would you like to know more? How long has he been planning this? Dang, Reinhardt, you got your shit. Let's 
do extreme environment training. Bada bing, bada boom. <sighs> I need some more water. <sighs> Refreshing. A helping hand. Bundaba. So we get some more pee pee. Okay. Looks like we can hold another speech, which we really should. And then we got, let's propose the ceasefire. Vor has now developed a point in which the forces of the Ofen have achieved an undeniable superior on the ground. It's time to bring the, to go to the negotiation table to attempt to finally bring an end to this terrible conflict. Let's do it. So we got 30 days. I have to imagine they'll probably agree to it. Oh! Yeah, they did! Nice. When Boers, Germans, Americans, and Native Africans of a hundred people clashed, it seems seemed a war destined to end quickly. Instead of a swift victory, however, all the tens of thousands of men sent to fight in Africa found was mud, blood, and the endless heat. For the longest time, victory seemed an almost impossible proposition, as in the desert of Nib Nib ah, Namibia, the Mozambique forests, and the dusty plains of Zosa, young men struggled and died for reasons they knew not why. But with a valor and sacrifice, the South Africans and their allies in the OFN advanced forward, seizing territories once held under the grip of the Reich, giving those who lived there a taste of something they thought lo lost years ago. Hope. The Germans, recognizing that future conflict would gain them naught, negotiated a ceasefire, and at last, after so long fighting and dying, the young men of Africa returned to their homes. But on the international scale, the bloody Germans and Hart and OFN merely prepare for the next clash. The Dark Continent returns to peace of a sort. So, um... There we go. Okay. So, South Africa is looking pretty thick. In fact, we're taking up most of uh, South Africa actually. I forget, did they do the, um... Alright, we can't see what they did. I'll have to look back on the footage, because I honestly forget if they, uh, pissed off the, um, the ANC. Alright, um... I think, I think, what, Cape Town Massacre indicates whether they did or not. Or commander raids. Yeah, they they, they um they were horrible to their minorities, uh, well their majorities. But uh, we'll, we'll see how how well that ends up working for um the Reich Um, peace at last. I have a feeling South Africa is not one for this world for much longer, at least realistically. I know for a fact that, um, these guys are not long for this world either, but we'll wait and see. Okay, we got national focuses up the wazoo. And we can complete them in a day, so... Galen has provided us with a list, a long one, and just the first of many. It wasn't surprising, of course, that the Nazi Party still packed the gills with conservatives and militarists, and even a few SS sympathizers. What was surprising was the revelation of their boldness. Party men are, with few exceptions, infamous for cowardice and lack of imagination. This has been the case ever since we first took power, and we no longer had to worry about the electorate. We can largely pin this on the fact that the party now exists solely to fill the rubber stamp legislature that is Reichstag, and as, career, as a career ladder for the ambitious young bureaucrats. At least this list is more beneficial than concerning. The Nazi party so far escaped through scrutiny in the Sonder, Sondergericht compared to the bureaucrats. Time to uproot root the Wheaton Garden. It would be too drastic and unpopular to simply purge the entire party, but with concrete evidence of certain individuals' plans. Who would question the removal of a few problematic elements? Sure as heck wouldn't be me. Am I right, guys? So we saved up 10 days, and there's only really 7. 
Fuck, our outlook is regressing. Okay, we'll do some token political promises. Because we need those. Because I do not want on our right right to collapse. The imminence of that is concerning. Um, outside observations of outside. Anyone can watch the news and see what is going on in the wi uh, wider world. But the Gestapo and Abwehr have been consistently outwitted by their foreign opponents for decades. During the Second World War, espionage was one of the few areas that the Allies were always able to beat us in. Gellin, strangely enough, appears to have been working on this matter on a, of his own accord even before the end of the war. He informs us that Russia has fallen, has drastically changed in the years since the West Russian War. Beyond the borders of Muscovy, the former Soviet Union has splintered as uh, given way to a multitude of warlords and splinter states, all vying for supremacy over the ruins of Russia. Gellin's agents has, have informed him of wider, uh, widespread plans for the reunification by the disparate rulers of Ural, Siberia, and Central Asia. That's not all, all either. Gellin has provided a literal pile of information on the world's most troubled regions, from our own positions in Europe and Africa to far-flung China slowly rebuilding in Japan's shadow. The war to, world, according to Gellin, is certainly more interesting than we had previously thought. Indeed. If only they, they realized you could just look at this map and see that. So we have Pavel Odar, seemingly coming in clutch for the most part. Not even a felt. Well, the fucking anarchist won. You know, it really is not looking good for any ideology other than socialism in Russia. Although, I do take that back. Any ideology but s socialism and fascism, apparently. Jesus Christ. Well, Gillen has, in very a sh very short period of time, proven his worth beyond doubt. The fear of wishing to consolidate all intelligence agencies into a single organization under a certain supervision has thus decreed that this most gifted and helpful patriot will have his wish granted, and short the Reich's ever vigilant guardian will not be outmodeled the outmodeled Abwehr or the politically unreliable Gestapo, but the RND. Gallen will obviously have to report to the fear regularly, but be, will be beholden to him alone. Gallen will also have a carte blanche to shape and organize the RND as he sees fit through his finalized plans for it. Will, though, well, though the finalized plans for it will need to run by the fear for the final approval. This marks a new, brighter day for the Reich's security, and an appropriately dark one for our enemies. Even the SS will come out to fear our new hidden blades, striking out at their insidious tendrils from the shadows. There we go. Okay. Oh, dear. I gotta say, I'm really, really not liking... All, all, all this is going um but there's not much else we can do other than start running a slight budget increase we gotta be in the green a little bit Can I not boost more money? I'm not sure how this entirely works, to be honest. But, uh, who am I to question it? And we're improving our stuff slowly enough. Our poverty rate, it's pretty low. But, I mean, nothing's perfect, I guess. We could use some rubber. It seems... We 
Get all another speech. In fact, I think we need to hold another speech. There we go. We got a new agency, the Reich, the R&D. Okay. Okay. So we can use our command power. Show special min missions or standard missions. Okay, we can pick our research. Is there anything I can do for my own regime stability? That's what I want to see. Okay. Drive our political enemies. Media manipulation. Fuck them up. Fuck them up, Gellin. Hmm. Okay, let's go with... Knock-off training. In a world of infiltration and espionage, a fist to the face is sometimes still the best solution when it comes to a life or death situation. Military espionage, even police forces across the world, have adopted martial arts or even developed their own response. The art of deftly taking control over an enemy in close quarters combat can prove useful in many situations. Ones the R&D agents are likely to experience at one point or another as well. If so, they must do... If so, all they must do is try to remember some of the basics of knock-off. I'm down for that. Alright, so we got some basic stuff going. Um, I think all we can really do at this point, guys, is just uh, call it here. Because uh, we're out of time for today's episode. Thank you as always for watching. However, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more uploads every weekday, as well as every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything of sort, leave in the comments section below. I read all the comments I get and appreciate any all feedback you kind of folks might have for me. If you want to send feedback some way, I have a Patreon down below. If you want to watch me play games or do stuff live, I have a Twitch, which I'd recommend you check out. I've been doing some stuff for the past couple days, or at least past couple days of time of me recording this. And I have some fun. I've had some fun with it. I also have a uh, D Discord if you want to join up with that. We can chat, play games, and do that for a grand old time in general. So yeah, that's about it for now, folks. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Dogwood33, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.